Hey, welcome back to Guided Hacking, and today we're going to be talking about the portable executable file format. So the PE file format is a fundamental format for executable files, object code, DLLs, and other types of native files on Windows. So a PE file consists of a number of headers and sections that tell the Windows loader how to put the file into memory and prepare it to run. So let's take a deeper look into this file format and really get to know it and see what fun information it stores. The first part of the PE file format is the DOS header, which is a 64 byte long data structure. This structure makes a PE file an MS-DOS executable just for compatibility reasons. However, it does store important information about the the PE file, which is mostly useful to the MS-DOS loader, but some of this information is also useful to the newer Windows loader. So the DOS header does have quite a bit of members, as you can see. You're probably like, oh my god, what is that? But it's okay, we'll talk about them and the information they contain. The first member of this struct is eMagic, also called the magic number. All valid DOS executables have its value set to the constant hex 4D5A or MZ in ASCII. It's basically the signature of a valid MS-DOS file. The next members of this structure aren't that much of importance to us because they contain information that's useful for the DOS loader to calculate offsets and set up the memory and tells us very little about the file. The last member is ELF anew, which contains an offset to the NT headers. This header is important to the newer Windows NT loader, but we'll cover that later in the video. The next thing is the DOS stub, which is just a DOS program that prints the error. This program cannot be run in DOS mode and exits if the program is run in DOS mode. This isn't really relevant anymore, it's just because of Microsoft's commitment to backwards compatibility. This video was brought to you by AnyRun. AnyRun offers a cloud-based interactive malware analysis sandbox accessible directly from your browser. The sandbox allows you to upload your own malware samples or browse through those which have been publicly uploaded. Let's check out this zip file which was publicly analyzed and deemed malicious. We can scroll through the screenshots recorded during the initial analysis, look at network connections, and more. Over in the processes, we can see some commands being run on behalf of the user. And clicking on the text report gives us a full rundown of all the activities any run has flagged as malicious. The team also recently added support for Linux, ensuring analysis capabilities across a wide range of malware samples. In addition to malware analysis, AnyRun is now offering a new threat intelligence platform, which enables defenders to do things such as search IOCs, look at real-world events, and map C2 locations. You can try AnyRun now by visiting any.run and signing up for free with a business email account. That's ANY.RUN, and you can sign up for all these features free. Thank you to AnyRun for sponsoring this video. The next structure inside the PE file format is the NT header structure. This structure comes in two variations, a 32-bit and 64-bit variation. The 32-bit version is named image NT headers and the 64-bit version is named image NT headers 64. And inside of this structure, there are three members. First, we have the signature, which is a D word, meaning that it takes four bytes. It has a constant value of hex 50450000, which in ASCII translates to PE with two backslash zeros. The next member of this structure is another structure called the image file header. This structure is also referred to as the COF file header, where COF stands for Common Object File Format. This structure contains seven members. The first member stores a number which indicates the target CPU architecture for which this executable was compiled. It has three possible values, as you can see in this table here. The next member of this structure is number of sections. This number contains the number of sections in the PE file. We'll cover what sections are later. This just indicates the size of the section table. The next member is time date stamp, which contains a Unix time timestamp that indicates the date and time of when the file was created. The next member is pointer to symbol table. It contains a file offset to the cough symbol table. However, for PE files today, this member is typically set to zero to indicate that no cough symbol table exists. Similarly, the number of symbols number specifies the number of symbol table entries. But again, in modern PE files, this is almost always set to zero as well, indicating no cough style symbol table. The reason these fields are left at zero is because the cough debugging information format is now deprecated. The next member is size of optional header, a two byte member that specifies the size and bytes of the optional header, which is the next structure inside the NT header, but we'll look at that in a few moments. The last member is characteristics. This member contains flags that indicate attributes of the file, like whether it's an executable, contains debugging information, is the file a system file, etc. There's a long list of flags that can be found on the Microsoft website, so you can go check that out. Now, the next member inside the NT header is the image optional header. 
and contrary to its name, it's a very important data structure for the PE loader to load and run executable code. However, it's called optional because it's not required for object files. The optional header is not bound to a specific size. Its size can change according to needs. That's why the previous data structure stored the size of the structure, which is put there at compile time. The optional header is different for 32-bit and 64-bit PE files. And because of this, we have two variations of the image NT headers. There are two major differences between the 32 bit and 64 bit version of the optional headers. The size of a few members inside the structure are now different. These five members on 32 bit are of the type D word, which is four bytes. And on 64 bit, they are of the type U long long, which is eight bytes. The other difference is in the number of members these two variations have. The 32 bit variation has 31 members and the 64 bit variation has 30 members. The 32 bit variation contains an extra member called base of data. This holds the relative virtual address or RVA to the beginning of the data section. On 32-bit windows, the data section needed to be located by the loader, so this member served that purpose, but this purpose is served by another mechanism on 64-bit windows, so this member is no longer used. So we're going to be looking at the 32-bit version, and we'll go over the members that we mostly care about. So the first member we're going to look at is magic, and this member is an integer which is used to specify which type of image it is, and it can have one of the following values. Hex 10b identifies the image as a PE32 executable, Hex 20B identifies the image as a PE32 plus executable. PE32 plus just means 64 bit. And Hex 107 identifies the image as a ROM image. So we'll go over the next two quickly. This is the major linker version and minor linker version. If the version of the linker is 15.1, then the major linker version will contain a 15 and the minor linker version will contain a one. We're gonna skip over to the address of entry point. This member contains a relative virtual address or RVA to the place where the first instruction of the PE is loaded in memory. For device drivers, this member points to an initialization function. This member is optional for DLLs because DLLs can just be loaded without executing any code inside of them. The next member is base of code. It stores the RVA to the start of the code section. Next we have base of data and like we mentioned before, it's exclusive to 32-bit PE files. It stores the RVA to the start of the data section. Next we have image base. This member specifies the preferred base address to load the PE file into memory. This value is set by the linker and used by the Windows loader. The value of image base must be a multiple of 64 KB. However, this value is almost never the address that the loader uses for reasons such as the ASLR, the preferred address being already used, etc. And in that case, the loader will choose a different free address range and load the PE there instead. Moving on, we have the section alignment. This member defines how the sections such as code, data, and others will be structured. This value is usually set to the size of a page on the target architecture. On x86 and x64 windows, it's 4096 bytes. Now the loader creates every section in a way that the starting address of every section is a multiple of this value. The next member is file alignment. This tells the loader how the section's data is aligned on disk. When the actual data within a section is smaller than the file alignment value, padding bytes, often zeros, are inserted. The next member is size of image. This member specifies the size in bytes of the image when loaded into memory. Size of image represents the total memory space required to execute the program, including all the code, data, and any required alignment. This value gets rounded up to a multiple of section alignment. The next member is size of headers. It has the total size of the DOS stub, NT headers, and the section headers combined and rounded up to a multiple of file alignment. Next we have checksum. This represents a checksum of the file's contents, which is calculated to ensure the integrity of the file. The next member is subsystem. This value specifies if the PE requires any subsystem to run, and here are its possible values. The next member is DLL characteristics, and despite its name, it's not exclusive to DLLs. It's also used for normal executable files. This member specifies a few characteristics characteristics of the executable, such as if it's NX compatible and if it can be relocated at runtime. And here's a list of all the characteristics that can be changed. The next four members are size of stack reserve, size of stack commit, size of heap reserve, and size of heap commit. And you can probably guess what these do, but I'll tell you anyways. These members specify the amount of stack space and local heap space to reserve and commit for the loader when mapping the PE into memory. The next member is loader flags. It's a reserved field that is supposed to be set to zero. The next member is number of RVA and sizes. This just tells us the size of the next member, which is data directory. It's an array of image data directory structures. This structure it has two members. The first one is virtual address, which is an RVA pointing to the start of the data directory. And the second one is just the size of that data directory. Moving on,
one, we're going to talk about sections and section headers. So sections serve as containers for the executable file's real data. They reside in the TE file following all the headers specifically after the section headers, and certain sections have their own names signifying their roles, and we'll cover a few of them. So the most common sections you're going to deal with are the text section, the section contains the code of the program, the data section, the section contains static variables, constant data, and global variable data. We have the R data section, and this section contains the read only data. The E data section, this section contains the export table of the PE, the I data section. This contains the import table of the PE, and the BSS section, this section contains the unutilized data. Now we're going to talk about section headers. This stores useful information about each section within an executable. Section headers include details like the size and location of each section, among other attributes. The first member of the image section header structure is name. This member usually spells specifies the name of the section, for example, the .text section, the .data section, and so on and so forth. The next number is physical address or virtual size. This number indicates the size in bytes of the section when it's loaded into memory. It might be different from the raw size stored on disk due to alignment and padding requirements. The next member is virtual address. The virtual address specifies where the section's data should be located in memory when the program is running. It's an address relative to the base address of the loaded image. Next we have size of raw data. This member specifies the size of the section's raw data as it exists in the PE file on disk. It takes into account alignment and padding. Next we have pointer to raw data and as you can guess, this member points to the location of the section's raw data within the PE file. The next four members are deprecated so we're not even going to talk about them. Finally we have characteristics. This describes various attributes of the section. It indicates whether the section is executable, readable, writable, contains code or data, and other characteristics that influence how it's treated by the loader. You can see the full list here and the link to the list. And that's it for this video. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again next time.